So the next low, my guess, is going to be uh, near the end of 2026. As long as Bitcoin stays above sort of this level here, as long as it stays, and, and it can go in there and still be fine, right? But as long as it stays really above that, then I, I don't really think that confidence is yet lost in, in the cycle. When we talk about Bitcoin dominance, you can almost think about it as not even just Bitcoin dominance in crypto, but you can almost argue that Bitcoin has been doing uh, pretty well compared to basically everything else for the last several years. Is the legendary four-year cycle still alive, or is Bitcoin entering a new era? In this episode, Benjamin Cowan breaks it all down. He explains why the four-year cycle is still very much intact, but how you need to think about it differently, not through the highs, but through the timing of major lows. Cowan dives into how Bitcoin has been outperforming almost everything else, even during market chaos, and why gold's breakout is sending a major warning signal. He also unpacks why rallies after death crosses are normal, why diminishing returns and smaller bear markets are now part of the game, and how the rise of ETFs could permanently shift Bitcoin's volatility. If you want a clear, data-driven view of where Bitcoin is headed next without the noise, hype, or hopium, you are in the right place. Let's dive in. And people saying, oh, this time is different because we have ETF and we have Michael Saylor, we have Bukele, we have people buying consistently. And do you think the four-year cycle is dead? I mean, can we... Can we respect it or it's something is gone forever? For now, I think it's pretty respectable. And it's not even just a Bitcoin thing, right? I mean, you know, and, and I when I think about a four-year cycle, I don't really think in terms of the highs, I think in terms of the lows occurring approximately every four years or so. So the next low, my guess, is going to be uh, near the end of 2026 is what my sort of baseline assumption would be. Uh, by the time you're out near the end of 2026, I imagine that Bitcoin will be forming some major low. Uh, the harder question to ask is where does the peak occur within each cycle? And so far, every cycle we've had right translated cycles where the peak occurs one year before the cycle low. So this, you know, Bitcoin has done very, very well over the last few years. So I would say the four year cycle is still alive. Um, but again, you know, earlier I mentioned a few minutes ago, a minute ago, I mentioned that it's not even just a Bitcoin thing, right? Like if you look at the S&P 500, it has this tendency to, you know, find lows oftentimes in like midterm years. And a great example of that is looking at, at the S&P and say like the 1960s and 1970s, you know, this was a low in 1966, 1970, 1974, right? Every four years or so. And then there was another one four years after that, 1978. Um, and that was a major low. Uh, and then you go over here and you can find another one in 1982. Right. So it, it just seems like there's these major lows that occur approximately every four years, even in recent years for the S&P 500. Right. You had a low in in 2014. Now, it did sweep that low about a year later, but that was you know, that was a significant low. Uh, you also had a low in 2018. It obviously swept that as well with a recession. But you can see and then also 2022. So you, you can see there is some validity to the idea before your cycle. But I think if you're going to say are we in a four-year cycle? I think it makes more sense to think about it in terms of lows rather than rather than highs. I think that's the way you should think about the four-year cycle. Like you said, it was following the macroeconomics, right? What happens to the S&P? What happens to everything else? Gold has gone bananas lately. Do you think, are we, I mean, today we've seen a nice pump. We are now at 91 something. Do you think we will catch up with it? Yeah, I mean, gold's been doing really, really well, which makes sense. I mean, it normally does pretty well under uh, environments like this. And and if, if the S&P 500 or Bitcoin were to get deep corrections it would likely cause gold to also get a deep correction but I, i'm going to assume that gold would likely get back to new all-time highs before the s p 500 even in those corrections and we already saw that right we, we already saw the s p drop you know like 20 percent uh and 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 while it was dropping gold also got a correction but it's almost like in order to see the drop you actually have to go to the daily time scale you know the daily time frame for gold and and you can see it just quickly regained those highs so I think that gold is is probably going to uh, continue in this type of environment where it outperforms the S and P 500 for for at least a little while longer, and it could be one of those things where it just continues this path until until you know quantitative tightening is over. Uh, for Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin has been doing better than most cryptocurrencies, and we we looked at that through the lens of Bitcoin dominance, right? 
what I think right now that we're we're sort of in is essentially what happened after you know we we get these death crosses and we had one in 2023 we had one in 2024 and then we also had one here in 2025 and you'll notice and by the way that's not the only ones right you, we also had one here in in 2021 um and then we also had one I and mean, there's plenty of them that occur uh here's one in in 2019 right but what's 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 interesting about them and, and even right here, right? What's interesting about these death crosses is that they sound bad, but what usually happens is you rally on the other side of death cross, right? So you 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 dump into the death cross and it's it's the very act of dumping that causes the death cross in the first place, the 50 day SMA to go below the 200 day SMA. And then on the other side of it, then you get, you know, you get these rallies. And so we got it, you know, we got it in 2021. We obviously got it in 2023. And in 2024, right, we had these rallies after the death cross. Uh, we also had one in 2019, but that ultimately led to a, a lower high. So, you know, what I'm thinking right now in terms of Bitcoin is that, you know, this rally that we're in was always a very likely rally to have because we always get, we almost always get rallies after death crosses. Even in cases where they set lower lows, you would expect a rally, right? And so this is the one example um, where in recent history, where it, it you know, it didn't, uh, well, I guess there was also 2022, right? But you had this rally where it basically rallied back up to where it broke down from, right? And in the in the bullish cases, right, they ultimately just, they, they got these rallies, they went north of the 200-day moving average, which is this white line, right? White line. Uh, and then they got a correction, and then it formed a higher low. So right now, Bitcoin is just now above that 200 day moving average. You know, I, I would argue that at some point there's going to be a pullback, you know, well before we, we get to a new all time high. Right. There's going to be a pullback. And at that point, it'll be time to sort of face the music as to whether it's just a, a, a higher low, which is what we want to see, or if it is a lower low. The good news, though, is that even if it is a lower low, like even if it does play out like 2019, which is by the way, I mean, the reason I bring up 2019 is because that was the year that the Fed ended quantitative tightening last cycle, right? So that's at least the reason why I bring it up. And and the good news though, is if it is 2019 and it, and it just ends up being sort of a, a sweep of this high or, or sort of a sweep right there. And then, it, and then it goes back down. The good news is that it could still form another lower low and still not necessarily be like a full-blown recession right um and you know the reason why that's important is because the last low was able to stay above the 2024 high and it was also able to stay well above the 2021 high so my argument is that and i, I think i've said this like a lot um for the last couple of months like my argument is that as long as bitcoin stays above sort of this level here, as long as it stays, and, and it can go in there and still be fine, right? But as long as it stays really above that, then I, I don't really think that confidence is yet lost in, in the cycle, right? I think that there's still, there's still a hope uh, that, you know, that the cycle could live on uh, and, and we maybe get a right translated cycle. If you go below that level, right? If you go below that level, then you, you probably just are in for, not a great market, probably not until say after the next four year cycle low, right near the end of 2026. So that's kind of where I am right now. Uh, and I, I, I've sort of, you know, as, as long as we stay above really like the 2024 high, then uh, I, I think market structure is still intact. And by the way, in, in 2016, 2017, um, you know, Bitcoin tested, you know, in 2017, Bitcoin actually wicked below the 2016 high, right? And so because we haven't even done that yet, it does leave some flexibility if we do end up getting, say, like another sell off or, or, or something like that. So, I mean, for now, uh, Bitcoin has held up much better than honestly most everything else. I mean, even even the what's crazy is even the Nasdaq, right? Even the Nasdaq went all the way down to its 2021 high. It even went below its 2021 high. So really, I mean, that's one of the, re I mean, when we talk about Bitcoin dominance, you can almost think about it as not even just Bitcoin dominance in crypto, but you can almost argue that Bitcoin has been doing uh, pretty well compared to basically everything else for the last several years. Now, obviously, at some point that will change, but 
I think as long as it's not changing, you know, it makes sense to ride that Bitcoin dominance train for as long as possible. Maybe the ETF are going to change the inflow and outflow, but are you expecting like less of a pump and less of a dump? Let's say when we face eventually the bear market. Yeah, I mean, like we have diminishing losses and diminishing returns. So like we have diminishing returns in the sense that every cycle tends to be a lower high in terms of like from the low to the peak uh, for the most part. Um, so I would probably expect diminishing returns. So we're probably not going to see us like uh, the exact same type of rally that we got uh, uh, last time. Like it probably won't be as 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 intense. That's not really a reflection of, of Bitcoin being weaker. It's just a reflection of the market cap being a lot higher, and it just takes exponentially more money to move to move the market. Um, and and with that, the good news is well, the bad news is that you get diminishing returns, right? But then the good news is that you can also then get diminishing losses, where the bear markets aren't quite. If it's a normal right translated cycle, then I would I would expect each bear market to be not you know a little less bad, and you can actually see that uh, by looking at at all the prior bear markets, right? Like the first bear market was a ninety four percent drop, and then the next one was like eighty seven percent. The next one was eighty four, I believe. Yeah, and then I think this one was seventy seven. So I mean, you can see that each bear market has gotten. Um, I mean, while 70 to 80 percent drops don't feel great when you're going through it, like it is not as bad from each cycle to another. And you can also see that you get diminishing returns, right? Like every cycle, say, like from the low to the high, that's like, a, you know, an 11,000 percent rally. This one over here was a 2000 percent rally. So far, we've had a, you know, like a five to 600 percent rally, right? So I, I just think that it's an artifact of a higher market cap. So you're, you're right it's more than likely you're going to have diminishing returns and diminishing losses.